actually uh, want to start off with a key message that um, we're all marketers on this call. Um, and uh, <clears throat> within all our businesses, no matter what shape or size or category uh, or industry that we deal with, uh, it's incumbent on us to turn uh, adversity uh, into opportunity. Um, simply put, no other profession is close to the customer uh, or the consumer. Um, and in times of uh, great adversity and change, particularly when consumer behavior uh, and, and consumer sentiment is changing, um, the rest of the business, uh, be they the finance people, uh, the production people, the CEO, whoever, could be turning to, to the marketer to be able to say, what do we do now? Um, so by way of introduction, um, I actually don't call myself a CEO of, a, of an advertiser association. Um, my DNA is brand marketing. Uh, like a lot of you guys, um, my entire career has been spent uh, in uh, marketing, primarily with FMCG companies. Um, on the screen now, you can see a few that I've worked for. I've kind of like sized these in context of uh, the influence on, on my thinking and my marketing career. So I spent the longest time with uh, Reckitt Benkiza. Um, they were very defining uh, uh, for me in terms of how I approach uh, business and you know uh, commercial issues through marketing. But also Kellogg's and Nestle, very influential. And I also spent a short period of time um, uh, at, uh, at Unilever here in Australia too. So, you know, my DNA is brand marketing and I look at it, any commercial problem uh, through brands. Um, and I think that's my first message to you. You're all, you know, in command, in control, uh, custodians of, of, of brands, uh, many of which will be, I'm sure, quite old brands. And in some ways, um, we have a short uh, a responsibility because in our careers because Typically, we pick up a brand from somebody else. We look after it for a few years. Hopefully, by the end of the time when we pass it on to somebody else, we leave it in a much more healthy, healthy state. Um, and, and, and I think um, the tenure that we've all now got on our respective brands is in a set of circumstances that are obviously unprecedented. So it really does call uh, for very, very different thinking. And that's the theme I'd like to... Uh, to share with you as I go through uh, my, my section this morning. So um, what's important right now? Um, and look, I, I, I'm not going to get into conversations as to whether it's a, a V-shaped recovery, a U-shaped recovery, um, you know, when is there going to be a vaccine? Um, you know, is that going to change everything? Because all those things are relatively speaking, unknown and unknowable. We, we can't control those. Um, so, it's relatively speaking uh, pointless in, 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 in talking about them. I think we actually have to go back to some more fundamental uh, uh, issues. And that is really about asking the right questions um, in the first place about our business relative to uh, our customers or consumers. Because the answer will be different uh, for each of us, of course. You know, some categories may be facing situations where actually the consumer uh, involvement with your engagement with your business hasn't changed much at all. Others may have actually seen something completely change overnight. Um, so that's a very, very different uh, uh, <clears throat> question to solve for. Um, but it's very, very important to actually identify what that critical problem uh, of, of yours is uh, and then focus in on solving, solving that. This may all sound very, very motherhood, but believe me, uh, the number of my members who are chasing after um, uh, 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 questions or problems which they've got no real chance of solving because um, they are, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, to, to the customers, for example, their brand might be irrelevant, you know, within, with, you know and, and, and hence, you know, the, the, the amount of time they're thinking about that is, is, is inconsequential. It's really, really important to, to, to narrow in on asking the right questions. The other thing, of course, to remember is a lot of the assumptions that we've all based our, uh, uh, our plans and ideas, our visions, um, uh, our growth strategies, our executional plans or whatever, of course, could have changed. 
Um, and, and it's very much uh, a case that we have to go back to basics and check out each of those assumptions. Are they still true or have they changed? I think the, uh, the third and final uh, aspect that's uh, important is um, we need to drive confidence um, uh, that a brighter future is real. Um, because um, ultimately the marketing profession um, is accountable uh, for being the lighthouse uh, for their business. You know, we can metaphorically speaking, uh, or should be able to see over the horizon. What is the consumer thinking today? Why are they thinking that? You know, what insights does, does that generate? How do I, you know, then turn those insights into commercial ideas and opportunities uh, for growth? Bringing that type of uh, uh, conversation to the leadership room and being able to actually articulate in appropriate storytelling um, what a brighter future looks like and very, very importantly, how to get there is the job of the chief uh, marketing officer. It doesn't matter what we call ourselves, and I, and I've, I can wax lyrical about this, you know, chief growth officer, chief experience officer, chief customer officer, it's all rubbish. At the end of the day, we are marketers at heart and we are chief marketing officers and that's our role uh, in the leadership room. Um, the, in terms of the context of uh, the VUCA world, um, I thought that it'd be best to try and explain in the short amount of time that I've got five things that matter right now. And I've drawn obviously these five things from a lot of what I see here in my market, but I'm sure that many of them are consistent uh, uh, with, with, with your uh, market as well. Um, and I'm sure we can talk about some of them in more depth in the, in the panel section at the end of the uh, presentations. Where I'd like to start is um, around, believe it or not, capabilities. Um, interestingly, Australia, as you may or may not be aware, has had uh, 29 years of no recession. We haven't had a recession in Australia since the early, early 90s. Um, we've got a whole generation or two of marketers who have never experienced an economic downturn. So, Whereas you, you, know, you might have uh, marketers who've got the fundamental skills, have they actually uh, be, uh, been asked to use those skills in uh, the economic circumstances uh, that we're now facing? That's point number one. Point number two is, is that we hear a lot about the hard technical skills that we as marketers need right now, uh, particularly around you know, digital skills, uh, uh, data science, driving you know, uh, insights and, and, and ideas from you know, uh, uh, data sources increasingly now driven by you know, technology and MarTech. Um, and I think a lot of the uh, solutions that we see around capability are focused, perhaps too focused on that, that area. Where a lot of my members have reached out to the AANA is, John, um, in order to equip my teams to be able to cope with these unprecedented times, we need to lean into uh, uh, softer skills, what we call higher order human skills, skills to be able to lead change uh, around, around our brands and our, and our marketing. And an example of what we've done uh, here with the AANAs is that we've responded to that and completely pivoted our, our capability program. And this is just an example of, uh, of, of the type of areas that we're now teaching marketers um, uh, in, in Australia. So we've kind of like said, okay, what are those soft skills that you know, people need right now? Um, and we've identified uh, resilience, um, skills around curiosity, uh, how to uh, think about problem solving uh, creatively, creatively, how to actually think about innovation. And this is not just literally new products or new services, how to think innovatively to drive uh, new growth opportunities. But then very, very importantly, once you've got a new plan, how do you actually bring all that together and inspire the organization and win support uh, with that within the leadership room? And that's where strategic storytelling uh, comes in. And believe it or not, it's not all about rational argument and numbers and figures. It's actually about the emotive story as much as anything. Giving people the confidence that there is a brighter future and that by executing this plan against the right strategy, against some great new insights, that you know, you know, success, growth, whatever the metric is, you know, is achievable. 
So that's just uh, uh, the first one. The second one is really, of course, we've seen the rise and rise uh, of online. And we've recently done some research in, in Australia here around um, uh, what's going on here. And uh, I'd sum it up by saying we're seeing an accelerated shift to e-commerce, uh, as obviously people are, are reluctant to go out or in forced lockdowns. So businesses, you know, marketers really need to think about how do you actually deliver your products and services through the online channel, uh, but also the distribution channels that go with it, um, particularly if you're using third parties. Um, and with increasing spend going to uh, uh, online, um, how do we deliver mass personalization? Um, obviously, traditional channels like TV are great at mass marketing, but online gives us the additional flexibility through addressability and targeting uh, to deliver more personalized uh, messages. But it has to be on a, on, a, on a scale basis, because if you don't, then you're never going to get the commercial outcomes that you're looking for. Third, thirdly, um, first party data will be king. Um, I think we've all heard of uh, the death of cookies. Um, Apple are going to be uh, changing their identifier system um, on the iPhone uh, and the iOS system. Um, basically, our reliance on uh, third party data, um, uh, you know, as, as you know, delivered primarily through cookies today, um, is going to disappear uh, within 18 months. So I think, you know, nothing like a crisis to, you know, to, to, to stimulate change. I think businesses need to get into the space of gathering their first party data uh, uh, now, owning their customer quite literally. This will be supported by uh, uh, the continued growth of connected TV. I'm not sure what the stats are for, uh, for you guys, but, uh, in Australia now, uh, uh, more than 55% of homes have a smart TV. Um, uh, addressability is becoming uh, uh, an option uh, for, for reaching uh, TV audiences. We all know that the large screen is the most effective uh, screen uh, through attention. Um, so therefore, if anything, this is a rebirth of TV, which is, a, which is great news because um, uh, it, it uh, gives, you know, everyone has been crying about the death of TV, well, guess what? It's like the phoenix rising from the ashes. It's back uh, and it's here to stay. Fourth, there's no, no getting away from the fact that, um, you know, despite pandemic, despite depressions, recessions or whatever, the, the old truth that great ideas and great creative drive growth doesn't go away. Um, believe it or not, and as you most probably aware from Bennett and Field work, um, having a really great creative execution doubles the ROI of your media. One of the problems we have as a marketing profession uh, and when we look at you know, the complexity of, of our choices in the marketing mix is, is that you know, we compare the ROI of one channel versus the other, assuming that all creative is constant in delivery. It's not. There's great creative, there's rubbish creative. Um, and as you know, great creative doubles your media ROI. So lean in on this, um, you know, to, to engage. And if ever there's a time to break rules, um, this is it. You know, break rules, break the paradigms, challenge the assumptions, um, and just start with a blank piece of paper and build, build again. And then finally, um, I think um, we have to take uh, a long-term view. As much as you know, we're under pressure, particularly from the CFO, for you know, I need results uh, this month. Um, you know, the, the the science, the empirical evidence around uh, the long and short of things is not going to change. You know, short-term focus will just do this all the time. It will never do that over time. Um, and the important thing is, is that you, we have to get that balance right. So um, you know, the investment split. Um, you know, should be 60% long-term focused brand building, 40%, you know, uh, um, performance marketing, short-term sales uh, focused. As soon as you start seeing that swing the other way, you start to see your growth trajectory uh, and your, your brand health metrics uh, start to wane away. That won't change going through a recession uh, um, you know, that we're now facing. And of course, you know, by definition, that means we have to have a multi-year vision. Um, so it's not just about going to the board or, or the leadership 
uh, group and saying, this is what we're going to do uh, this, this week or, or, or this month, by all means, talk about this week, next week, this month, but then say, this is part of a broader plan for this financial year, which is part of our three-year or five-year strategy uh, for the business. So that, you know, you, we can all join uh, the dots towards uh, a long-term uh, future. So I think I've used up my 15 minutes. I hope Hopefully I've kept close to time, um, but I'm very happy to take questions in the panel section to follow. I'll hand over back to you now.